Are you new to ant keeping? Have you ever wondered what type of ant farm to use? With so many different types and brands, it's so easy to get lost with it all. If this is you, I have great news. I keep over 50 different colonies and queens and have tried and tested many ant nests. I feel like I can confidently say this has got to be the best ant farm you could use for your ant colony. But first, welcome to another episode of The Ant Keeper, where I upload about all things ant related. If you find yourself enjoying this video, then do me a favor and subscribe. It makes my day. My friend Aesthetic Ants sent me two ant nests, and I think they're the best ant farm money can buy. Really, there is a lot to love about these nests and Aesthetic Ants himself. His innovation and passion is second to none. Rather than doing an in-depth review of the nests, let's do something more exciting. Instead, let's move some colonies in and see how they respond to the design. So what makes a good ant nest or just a good setup? Well, it's simple. Ants basically need clean water, something to eat, and some are dark to Netflix and chill. So just about any nest design works for the vast majority of ants. But there's something else to consider when buying the perfect ant setup. Do you know what it is? You want something that makes husbandry as easy as possible. And I think these designs do just that. We're going to move one colony into each nest. This green head ant colony is going to reside in the medium nest and this pale-legged sugar ant colony are going to move into the large white tongue nest. It's been a few months since I've shared these colonies with you, and a lot has changed since then. So let's get you up to speed. This green head ant colony is an old colony right from the very beginning of this channel. In fact, this queen was my first of this species. I caught her all the way back in October 2021. Since then though, this colony was affected by the ant invasion, which killed off the majority of our ant collection at the time. That attack brought this colony down to just the queen, and I think it was about 5 cocoons. At the time, any survivors of that wild ant invasion were dropping off one by one. I expected this queen to die off too. I've noticed that ants are extremely sensitive to stress. It's almost like they have a heart attack if they get overstimulated. Some species like green weaver ants are particularly sensitive. Others like bull ants are also extremely sensitive. Whereas the iridomomic species thrives on the thrill of a rush. Fortunately, it seems green head ants are fairly tolerant to stress and this queen survived. Since I wasn't sure if this queen was going to make it through the night or not, I decided to try an experiment, something I've never done before. I moved this little ant into a wild setup. I felt that if she would survive, it would be interesting to see how an ant colony grows and develops from scratch in a simulated wild condition. This move was exactly one year ago. To get this colony to actually move into the new nest, we're going to change a few things and move them out of this top and into an Oz Ant's acrylic small outworld and of course the aesthetic ant's medium Waitong nest. That's a mouthful. <laughs> but first, let's remove some of the sand that's been hiding their success this past 12 months and see what they've been up to because I don't even know how big this colony is. I think the easiest and least likely to cause damage method to removing the sand is with this special tool, a spoon. <laughs> Wait, how many workers do you think this colony has in total? I'm thinking maybe 50 workers. Although, don't guess anywhere near me because I'm always wrong. I'll count them all up once the sand is removed and let you know on screen. Wow. There is quite a lot going on here. I'm actually really surprised of how much they can squeeze in between the thin layer of sand and the bottom of the tub. It's pretty cool, hey? It's even more interesting yet that they've created these structures with just tiny droplets of water from their water feeder. I think despite their species being pretty tolerant to stress in general, we'll make their move into the new home as easy as possible for them. Let's prepare the new home now. Now this species can't climb glass or plastic, or at least they're not supposed to be able to, so I'm not going to put an escape proof barrier around the top edge of the outworld. Also, since this is a cocoon spinning species, we'll add a thin layer of sand and fiber so the larvae have something to grab onto to help them spin their silk if they want it. It's important when using a substrate like sand in the outworld not to make the depth of the sand too deep. If you do, the ants may choose to nest in the outworld instead of your pretty nest, which is pretty annoying. <laughs> ants seem to always prefer whatever makes them feel most secure and dark, which if they choose to bury themselves in the sand, will make viewing them impossible. So be careful. 
I'm going to pull this colony in. It's the easiest, fastest method, and the shock encourages the colony to try and find somewhere dark, like the nest, to run in and hide. The pale-legged sugar ant colony is one of my favourite colonies. If you're an OG subscriber, you would remember we caught this queen using a black light in my own backyard. Since then this queen has done really well and grown into a 100 plus worker colony today. Unlike the previous colony, their new setup will be a mix of old and new. I'm going to keep the old outworld and of course replace the nest. They're currently living inside an Oz ant's acrylic small nest and have well and truly outgrown it. They desperately need a bigger home to house them in. Although I'm going to give this colony a heat cord that will encourage them to move into the new home and also promote growth. Given it's currently winter here in Australia, I think this new Waitong nest may be a little bit big for them. So if we get them growing as soon as possible, we shouldn't have any problems. To get the new home set up, we first have to do a couple of things. We need to apply a new layer of fluon around the top edge of their outworld, since the barrier is now wearing thin. Next, we need to remove some of the sand using the spoon method. Now we're ready to remove their current nest and plug it in with cotton and connect the EA nest. This design is called the tower as I mentioned before and I really like it. It gives a nice level of depth. Admiring aside, I'm really just putting off the tricky part. <laughs> we need to open up this nest and help encourage the colony to seek out a more secure home. If we just leave the nest closed up like this, even under constant light, it's likely the colony will just stay here for weeks, if not months. Luckily, it's just a few screws and we're there. I love both of these colonies, and I love how they're both exploring and discovering their new home. It's safe to say these nests are big enough to hold these colonies for the next 6 months or even longer. If you're interested in getting yourself one of these Waitong nests, then go check out the Aesthetic Ants website, the link is in the description below. If you made it this far, then make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, it really helps me out. Also, have you subscribed and become part of the AK colony? If you haven't, then what are you waiting for? Subscribe and be a part of one of the fastest growing colonies here on YouTube. Thank you everyone for watching this week's episode of the Ant Keeper. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, Ant Keepers Unite.